Hey, 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 it's Paul Jang, and today we're gonna to be talking about seven important land investing questions and the answers that every land investor needs to know, right? So uh, let's just get right to it. So number one, you have to consider how you are going to find your deals. I find that the best way to do it is to send out mailers, reach out to landowners, send out a blind offer, you know, suggesting a price that you would purchase it for, and then you'll get a couple responses back, and uh, from those you can decide which one you wanna buy. Another popular thing you can do is you can go to tax auctions, right? Every county has a tax you know, auction setup. Usually they'll do it every month or every quarter or every six months, but basically there'll be a list of different property that investors can buy, uh, if the state is a tax deed state, they basically give you the property right on the spot as long as you pay the auction bid amount. If it's a tax lien state, basically you'll get the rights to the property tax lien and they'll have to pay you back plus extra interest. If they never pay you back though, you could foreclose on the property and pick up property that way. I almost highly recommend just going to a tax deed state though. So find the area, see if your state is a tax deed state, and then if not, consider traveling um, to get to participate in those tax auctions. Another popular uh, way to go about uh, finding deals is to connect with other land investors for you know property that they might have, right? If they're willing to wholesale it to you, uh, that means that you're gonna be able to set, uh, save money either on your mailing costs or uh, travel cost in your time in finding a deal, right? If you can find a good deal from a land investor, just pick it up and you go ahead and flip it for terms or for a quick cash flow. The second important land investing question you need to really ask yourself is how you are going to decide on pricing your offers. Okay, so, uh, and, and this is true whether you go to a tax auction, you work, uh, at buying land from a land investor like wholesale or you know you are doing mailers and reaching out to land uh, owners directly you want to get the comparables so find out like how many uh, you know parcels of land uh, you know have sold in a certain area it's very similar to what realtors do whenever they're talking about residential sales they'll find all the houses kind of in the area and uh, what they ultimately sold for. So you could kind of do that if you have access to that data. Um, I've found that in general that that data is, is pretty limited. So you'll find that you kind of do a blend between property that's sold and property that is uh, out in the market currently, right? So if you're finding a lot of uh, properties at a certain price point, then you know, hey, that property is kind of going to sell like right around there. And if, if you want to basically beat the other prices, see if you can get a cheaper deal and still have enough of a profit margin that you could still flip it and make money. Um, I like to go by per acres. So this strategy doesn't really work if it's a smaller lot. You might just have to see, you know, um, lots that are similar in size and you know similar in that area to kind of come up with your price but if it's acreage um, especially the larger lots it becomes increasingly difficult to do that so you can figure out what is the price per acre for uh, a lot and then kind of work your way backward so all you have to do is get the per like what they're asking for and then divide it by the number of acres so then you can kind of get like an idea like hey you know, property is going for a thousand acres, you know, around this, this area, and they can kind of price accordingly, uh, you know, for future offers that you might want to make. The third basically question that you really have to ask yourself is how are you going to fund all your deals? So when you have a, uh, you know, great deal and you know you're going to be able to sell it, you're going to want to be able to purchase it. So uh, there's really three ways to go about this. The first way is just using your own capital. Uh, the next way, you know, and, and like your own capital just could be your own savings or uh, getting a loan from the bank or using a line of credit, but you're, you're using your own uh, capital to basically fund your deals. This method has limitations because you'll get access to, if you do all the things that I tell you to do, 
there will be more than enough opportunities, right, for you to find a lot of deals. And so a lot of times you'll, you'll start running out of capital pretty quickly if you're not aware of it. The, the second way you can kind of go about this is using a method called fast cash. And basically what you do is you get a property, a piece of land, and you hold it under contract, either with an option agreement or ask the uh, landowner if it's okay that we could close it for, you know, uh, months down the road. And if they're amendable to that, you find a buyer that is willing to purchase it, you get a deposit, and right when uh, you know it's time for you to buy it, a partner, you know, a fast cash partner, puts in the money for you to purchase the land and you flip it over to the next guy and you basically split the profits. That, that's kind of how fast cash works. It's pretty limited to only cash deals. And so if you want to scale a little bit more, let's say you wanted to get into terms deals, consider finding partners that you know want a higher interest rate that you can get and uh, just keep increasing that basically capital right from private investors and you could roll that money over into better deals. Uh, that might be more of an advanced part. So in the beginning, you might just end up using your own capital, but increasingly you want to go into that area if you want to go much bigger. And the reality is, is like you could probably do just, just fine just with your own capital um, if you have some saving. Fourth important question to kind of ask yourself is, uh, what is the process that you're gonna go over for due diligence? And uh, the things you're gonna wanna consider are uh, back taxes, um, title, access to the property, utilities, and zoning. So let's just kind of break down each part. Back taxes are pretty, it's not unique to land. It happens with residential properties as well. But with most houses, there, there's usually a mortgage on it, and the bank ultimately pays for uh, the property taxes. They, they essentially hold money in escrow. They'll, they'll take a little bit from your monthly check and then put it in escrow for them to use to pay the property taxes in the future. With land, because most land uh, doesn't have any mortgage associated with it, if the property owner's not, uh, you know, getting the mail and then basically, you know, paying for that property tax, eventually back taxes are gonna start accumulating. And if they don't pay that, the uh, county will come over and take that property. Before that point, there's there's a lot of property that have back taxes on it. So it might be a good strategy, like, you know, if you wanna target these types of people, there's land investors that solely focus on this strategy. You know, if you're reaching out to, um, you know, people that own land, you just wanna make, want make sure that whatever back taxes there are, that you either renegotiate it or you're okay with taking that that hit. Those property taxes are gonna follow the property whenever you purchase it. The next thing you're gonna wanna check is the title. And uh, you'll find a lot of scenarios where um, the person that you wanna buy it from isn't the person, you know, really owns the property. And usually it happens when it's, you know, a son or a daughter involved and they think have, they have rights to the property when you know, really the rights are to their father or to their mother. Um, usually they're older or they passed away or something like that. And you just need to make sure that um, there's a clean title whenever you purchase it. That, you know, the person that you're talking to is the owner and uh, they are who they say they are. Uh, one of the other things with due diligence is whenever you're checking up on property, you're going to want to see if it has good access. And this allows you uh, just to make sure that whenever you sell it in the future, you know, your prospective buyer is going to be able to access the property. Now you can go for, uh, you know, land that's been uh, ba basically landlocked, property that doesn't have any legal access to it. And you could still make money just flipping that if you're able to get a good deal, but it's much harder to sell. So like if you could focus on finding property that has good access, that's going to be a benefit to you. Uh, you will see with more, you know, property that is closer to urban areas that it's more important for them to know if they have utilities. Uh, so you, you'll want to check that uh, with the utility companies and see if, you know, the land that you're buying has that, you know, option. But if you're in rural vacant land, a lot of those options aren't available. So you'll have to look, so, so your prospective buyer will ultimately have to find alternative sources of energy, you know, to get going with it, whether it's from their RV or 
Um, they're gonna set up a, a solar system or go propane, dig a well, or just haul water over from the nearest water company. Those are the things you're, you're gonna get start getting questions for. And it helps if you kind of understand the area and what options are available to your prospective buyer. Uh, the last thing you're gonna wanna check is zoning. And just make sure that you're fine with the zoning that you know there isn't anything weird like if you're buying smaller lots that you know uh, some some counties will have restrictions on you know if it's you could only build on it if uh, you know it's a certain amount of acreage or a certain amount of square feet if your property doesn't match that or if that's not the end goal that you had in mind it could really set you back if you if you wanted um, uh, you know to buy agricultural land and do it in a way that you know, you would be able to, you know, purchase it, farm on it, and then ultimately sell it or lease it to a farmer. That's that's important information to know if like, you know, that's even allowed with the county. Okay, so you could check that just by calling the county. There's usually a zoning office and uh, you could just ask those questions and they'll have a better idea. The fifth thing you're gonna wanna know is basically how you're gonna market your property. And there's a, a whole range of ways to market your property. The main one, and what a lot of people consider is the multiple listing service. I would stay away from realtors. I know land investors have had some success with realtors, but generally they'll just start on the MLS and see if there's a potential bite. It's actually pretty hard to sell land just through the multiple listing service. So if you want to go that route, I would just Google uh, if there's any discounts. Uh, real estate brokerages in the county that you want to put your land in and uh, see if you could get in that way uh, otherwise you'll be paying a lot for not very much service um, consider going into land listing sites the ones that I use are a little bit more expensive they get a little bit more traffic and it's a little bit less hassle uh, but there's a bunch out there and you could just kind of do it whenever you Google like certain land in a certain state, see the ones that pop up and you could just target those air, uh, those land listing sites. Other popular ones are Zillow, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Uh, you'll find that with Zillow, because it's it's not really a land listing site, some of the, it, it's I find it difficult to work with honestly with Zillow but you know people have had success with it so you could check that one out like I, I actually initially started with craigslist a lot and facebook marketplace to save marketing dollars so there's land investors that just focus on these two platforms and sell all their land through it right so it, it is more labor intensive because you need to constantly be being up you constantly need to upload land listings because after you upload them, after a day or two, there's gonna be more new listings. And if you're not constantly putting it on these platforms, they'll kind of get um, you know, put on the back burner. The sixth thing you're gonna to wanna to consider, you know, in terms of like questions you should be asking yourself is, do you have all your paperwork ready to go? And that's basically, the things that you're gonna need is a purchase agreement on the buy side, a purchase agreement on the sale side, a land contract or a contract for deed and a promissory note. Those are all the contracts you're gonna to need to buy property, sell it for cash, and basically sell it for terms or for owner financing. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, you'll also want to look at deeds, uh, warranty deeds and special warranty deeds, and uh, all that information. I'll be uploading more videos, but you can probably just look it up on YouTube You know, for templates or this or that, right? Uh, so that's it for at least the paperwork. You just have to be ready whenever you're ready to buy it that you have paperwork because they're going to expect you to send them paperwork. They're not going to have it, right? The seventh thing you're going to want to ask yourself is uh, how you are going to close on the property. I particularly love uh, self-closings because title companies and following up with them is like a pain. And attorneys could be a lot more expensive. Uh, some states are just attorney states. So the self-closing option might not be available to you uh, in those states, but you'll just kind of like have to work out those closing costs into your deal. Otherwise, I would say just close the properties on yourself and um, save yourself $1,500 that the title company will do. You just need to make sure that title is clean. Uh, there's no liens or mortgages or anything like that. 
and you have all your closing uh, paper documents. But once you do it one time, it's like you just keep doing it over and over and it'll save you 1,500 every time you do this. With that said, I wouldn't do it for anything uh, more than $5,000. You know, because if you buy something for $5,000, you're looking to sell it for fifteen dollars or $20,000. Just make sure that the numbers are there, that, you know, it's worth just saving um, those closing costs. That's it, y'all, with uh, the seven important land investing questions and answers that you have to ask yourself and that every land investor needs to know. Uh, subscribe and like this video if you like this video. and. Uh, content related to multiple streams of income. Uh, I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Bye.